So as with these other things, with the circular array queue class, there's some code already written for us, and we're going to add some more. Um, so I declared one instance variable so far, which is an array of objects, and that will be all of our elements. Um, but if we look at the diagram, there's some other things we need to keep track of. We need to keep track of where is the head of the queue, where is the tail of the queue um, as well. So let's add that in. We're going to keep track of the current size of the array too. So, or the current size of the queue rather, like how, how much of the array have we filled in? The reason why we need to keep track of that is an empty queue and a full queue look the same. And so we need to know which one it is. So let's add some additional instance variables. Let's keep track of the index of the head of the queue. Let's keep track of the index of the tail of the queue. And let's keep track of, whoops, the current size of the queue. So the methods that, that we focused on with a queue um, were add, remove, we're going to write an empty method, um, and then we'll talk about this method in a moment later. So um, let's write the constructor first, though. So constructor, public, the name of our thing is circular array queue. That's our class name. And let's initialize all four of these instance variables. So this.elements equals new array of objects. We're going to start with five elements in our circular array. We'll initialize the head of the queue to index zero. We'll initialize the tail of the queue to index zero. Remember the tail is the index at which we'll insert the next element. So if the tail is set to zero, the next element we add to the queue, the first element we add to the queue, will go at index zero. That's great. And we'll keep track of our current size. So we know that our queue right now is empty and not completely full. Head, tail, and current size would all be initialized to zero anyway. But again, we want to be specific with our intention. Um, so that it's clear to other people reading our code, we do intend these to have a value of zero. And we didn't just happen to like get lucky with initialization of instance variables. All right, checks if the queue is empty. So this is that empty method that returns a Boolean. Easiest way to do this is just say return this.currentSize equals zero. Cool. Now, I was saying with the circular array queue that sometimes when the queue is full and we need to add an element to it, that might be a fatal error in like a real-time test and measurement system. Um, but there are other systems where that's not a fatal error. And let's say our queue is full and we need to push something there and we can afford the performance hit of like growing the uh, queue. Like we could double the side, size, we could copy over the elements. The same approach we take with like um, an array list. So we're going to write a more flexible circular array queue that can grow. So let's implement the add method. The add method takes one parameter, which is the element to add to the queue. And we're going to call a private method called grow if necessary. And we're going to scroll down and look at that. So we always call this method first before we call add, which basically saying like, hey, if the queue is full, like make it bigger um, so that we can write the code that ensures that there's room for the next thing. So let's scroll down and uncomment this grow if necessary thing and talk through what this method does. So what grow if necessary does is it checks, is the queue full? And the queue is full if the size of the queue, meaning the number of elements we put in it, equals the length of the array. If those two things are equal, queue is full. Okay. Um, so what are we going to do? We're going to create a new array that is twice the size of the old array. Okay. So we allocate this new array. 
And then we have to copy over all the elements into the new array. This, is, this line of code is a little bit tricky. Um, we can think through this from an algorithmic point of view. We're gonna copy all of the elements um, in the old array into the new array. And we're gonna loop from, so you know, there's the length of the old array is how many elements we need to copy and i starts at zero and in increments. So the head of the queue is gonna go at index zero in the old, or I'm sorry, in the new array. But the head of the queue isn't at index zero in the old array. It's at whatever index is stored in the variable head. So we have to set, put, use head here and then increment i. So if i is zero, head is where it is, right? And if i is one, okay, it's now the second element, third element. But it's not quite that simple because what happens in the case where we are incrementing off of head and we get beyond the end of the array, we need to loop back to the top to index zero. And this is a perfect use of the mod operator um, so that as we go beyond the end of the array, the mod operator takes us back to index zero and then one and then two. So this type of an approach we're gonna see in the code we're writing as well, but this is how we deal with the wraparound. When we've copied all the elements, we'll update the instance variable to refer to the new array. We reset head to be index zero. We reset tail to be index, which is the current size, and we're good to go. Okay. We're not writing this code together because that's not really the focus of today's lesson, but I think it's good for you to see how this type of thing works. Okay. All right. So we can assume this grow if necessary method works, and it does work. Um, and so now in the add method, we know that there's room in the array for us to add a new element to our queue. So we can just focus on that part of the algorithm and not the growing part. All right, we need to update three of our four instance variables. Um, we have to update some value in our array, we have to update tail because we add elements to the tail of the queue and we have to update current size. Head isn't gonna change because we're just adding to the queue. So let's go through each of those. Current size, increment it by one. Let's store the new value, the new element in the array. What index do we store it at? This dot tail. That's always the index of where the next element will be stored. Then we're gonna increment this dot tail, but we're not quite done, okay? If, the, if we had an array of five elements with indices zero, one, two, three, and four, and tail is four, and we increment tail and now it's five, that's not a valid index, it should be zero. We could check for this with like an if statement, right? We could say if this dot tail equals elements dot length, that tail to zero, um, but let's keep using that mod operator because it's much more common. Where you're going to use the mod equal operator, this dot elements dot length. So whatever tail value is, we'll, this code means this dot tail equals this dot tail mod this dot elements dot length. So if it did get set to five, five mod five is zero, so it's going to be set back to zero. That's what add looks like. Let's try remove. So remove is gonna be similar. Again, we have to update three of the four instance variables. We gotta update, um, we gotta get the value out of the array. We have to update the current size and now we have to change head, but we're gonna leave tail alone. Um, we also need to check if the queue is empty, just like we did with our linked list. So if this dot empty, if the queue is empty, we will throw a new no such element exception, just like we've been doing in all of our other code. All 
All right, if it's assuming Q isn't empty, let's reduce the current size by one. Let's grab and store in a local variable a reference to the element we're about to return before we lose track of it. So this.elements sub, this.head always stores the index of the next element to be removed from the queue, that is the head of the queue. But now we need to change this.head to be this.head plus one. And then I can do this all in one line of code. Then I can do mod this.elements, oops, elements.length. These two lines of code are the same as this one line of code. I just wanted to write it first as two separate steps to make it a little simpler to understand. But now we've talked through the mod thing. We usually write it all as like one step. So, and then we say return element. Connecting back to our, our theme really this whole week, the complexity of these data structures is not in the code, it's wrapping your head around conceptually how they work. We just implemented a full circular array queue um, and we did not write very much code. I mean, add has got these five lines of code, remove checks for the error, but then it's just four lines of code. There's not a lot of code here, but the complexity is being able to like, Think about this diagram of how the array is organized, where head and tail is, what happens when we wrap around, and encompassing that in our code. We can now switch to queue demo, and we can comment this out. So our like test code is already written for us. We make a new circular array queue. We add Tom, Diana, and Harry. We then remove an element, which queue is first in, first out. Tom was added first, so Tom should be removed first. We add Romeo, we call remove again. Now Diana gets removed. We add Juliet, we add Maria, and then we just call remove repeatedly in a loop until it's empty, and that's the output we expect. So we can run this thing, and we can see, yep, we got Tom, Diana, Harry, Romeo, Juliet, Maria. Perfect. Our queue is working as we expect.